Jesus. Modeled on a missile launcher built to withstand nuclear blasts, the probes are designed so swirling winds will roll down their tops. The high winds should actually help push them down into the ground. But if a probe gets lifted off the ground, it's history. With the storm safely passed, Samaras doubles back to locate the probes. He finds them, and the news is good. We lifted the edge of the probe up, and all the gravel was still underneath the probe. But the gravel is still here. So it's a very good testament of how well the probe affixed itself on the ground in the high winds. Samaras will get valuable pressure and temperature data from the pyramid probes. But the photo probe was lifted by the wind and flung nearly a thousand feet. The crack cameras leap behind two tantalizing shots of the twister. It proves you can get a camera into a tornado. But it's not enough to tell Samaras what's happening near the ground. Today, in the U.S. alone, tornadoes kill 70 people a year and injure 1,500. And they cause $400 million in damage. With so many lives at stake, scientists are determined to crack the secret of how tornadoes work close to the ground, where they do their most damage. Partha Sarkar and Fred Hahn are twister specialists. They work at Iowa State University with the largest tornado simulator ever built by scientists. A big problem needs big science. And this monster machine, nearly 20 feet across and more than 10 feet tall, <coughs> can conjure up an 8-foot tornado with 60 mile per hour winds. Scale models help scientists measure the forces buildings face when they're slammed by a twister. My dream is to build houses which can survive at least most commonly occurring tornadoes. But survival isn't easy when you're hit with swirling winds which can reach 300 miles per hour. Calculations show that twisting winds exert one and a half times the force of straight line winds. That means a 300 mile per hour tornado can strike with the force of a 450 mile per hour straight wind. Scientists believe the strongest of these winds are closest to the ground. But even the world's most sophisticated tornado simulator can't show what's actually happening in the deadliest zone. The only way to get the data they need is to go out in the field. Samaris' work from the field is essential to the lab team in analyzing the twister's power. It's a rare glimpse. We're able to clearly see the failure modes of this house. The sequence is that the roof looks like hitting first and then the walls. And then the shed hitting the whole house. You can see the whole house as it is exploding because the force is applied from all, all sides at the same time. The South Dakota footage confirms the basics we know about how tornadoes do their damage. It's a three-part combination. First, a structure is pounded by a blast from the base. Then, rotating winds go around the outside. And finally, like a boxer with an uppercut, a powerful upward draft finishes off the structure. There's more. Wind follows a simple rule. Once it gets into a building, it wants to get out. This means either blowing out the walls, the roof, or simply exploding the entire building. We understand the general dynamics of tornadoes, but what's actually happening inside the vortex remains hidden. For this, they need instruments, especially Samaris' new video probe to take a direct hit from a tornado. But filming inside a twister means shooting through dirt, rain, and fog to track debris pushed by winds moving hundreds of miles an hour. It will be no easy task. 
But it's very difficult. It's incredibly difficult. And certainly that's still a question as how much visibility we're going to see. But there's another way to study how debris in tornadoes causes damage. Analyzing the clues left behind. And nowhere offers better clues than Oklahoma. Where a series of tornadoes with winds near 300 miles per hour leaves a horrific path of destruction.